Hello students, welcome back to classes on computer organization. So next is about direct memory access DMA. So far the topics what we have discussed, uh, we could able to send a byte of data at a time, okay, byte or maximum byte. But here uh, DMA which lets you to transfer block of data at a time. Block of data. What is the meaning of block then? Block is nothing but a set. Set of words or you, in other words, in simple, you can you can say um, set of bytes, okay? In terms of MB, so several MBs of data, you can identify as a single block and that block can be transferred at a time. So, uh, the data tra rate or transfer rate will be increased or improved because of the use of this DMA, DMA which uses a controller circuit. A special circuit is required to perform the block of data block transmission uh, okay and here is the diagram we have uh, dma controller is it is called as it is normally associated with the bus so peripheral control interface pci or uh, the bus which we will be discussing about this pci bus and all SPSI pci buses we will be discussing later uh, just keep the keep that in mind otherwise you just mark it as bus that is also okay so there is a processor and main memory they are connected through an interface marked as bridge here and pci bus is marked let it be considered it as a bus now disk controller or dma controller where all the disks are attached similarly this dma controller can be connected to the ethernet interface also and hence to the uh, <coughs> internet Okay, and hence to the internet, you can send or receive the data in terms of KBs, GBs, sorry, MBs or GBs, whatever, over internet. Uh, so this controller circuit plays a significant role in transferring block of data at a time. This you should remember. That's it. That is what the use of or advantage of DMA. So DMA, which uses a, uh, this DMA controller uses a special type of registers. So, registers, uh, status and control, there is 32-bit register which involves uh, status flag and control bits uh, in it. So, earlier we have seen with the previous configuration, 8-bit uh, status register, 8-bit control register where, where control bits were enable and disable bits K and uh, enable for display and enable for, for keyboard. That was, that was the example we have seen earlier and interrupt request RQ, KIRQ and DIRQ for uh, uh, this one, status register content as seen as out also as the status register content we have seen earlier but now status and control bits are included in a single register status and control register it is marked as it is a 32 bit register uh, msb to lsb you can observe the contents so some uh, fields are dedicated here the last uh, you you start from uh, lsb that is rightmost bit which is marked as done bit whenever the data transmission is completed done bit will set it to 1 to indicate it is complete so or it is done uh, then read or r bar w bar so there is a at a time you can perform either read operation or write operation uh, write is active high uh, sorry uh, read is active high write is marked as active low so um, its value can be bit number one position number one bit value can be either zero or one if it is zero then 0 is active, 0 bar which is equal to 1, right? Write operation will be going on, it indicates. If it is 1, obviously, uh, read operation is going on. So, at a time, um, single operation it can perform. Either, either its value can be 0 or its value can be 1. If it is 0, it indicates write operation is going on. Otherwise, it is read operation. Then, similarly, various other bits are also available, which... Uh, only the important four bits are marked here 30th position and 31st position uh, we interrupt request interrupt enable ie it can be any device okay it can be keyboard display whatever so in general it is marked ie interrupt enable bit and interrupt request bit at last then starting address is important because we are defining the block block will be starting from somewhere the starting label is required and count value is also required word count if you know the starting address and word count you can identify how many uh, bytes of data you are transferring isn't it starting address normally word is nothing but set of four bytes recall big ndl little ndl and all you have studied them for first time 
right so each word is nothing but set of four consecutive bytes that is what as per our discussion so uh, starting address will be there for each and every word the left hand side which marks the address like 0000 or 00 next word will be it will be 0004 and so on if you know the starting address and count value you can estimate where it ends you can estimate the ending address of the block also and hence you can come to know how many number of uh, words or how many number of bytes you will be transferred or they are there in the block right so same explanation is given please go through okay the next concept is about bus arbitration okay you know the meaning of bus bus is a channel or it's a carrier which transfer which is used to transfer the data from one end to other end isn't it so the device that uh, allowed to initiate the data transfer on a bus at any given time is called as bus master okay the owner of the bus at any time any interval of time is called as bus master very simple uh, the device which is uh, transferring the data over bus is called as bus master any interval you take since multiple devices are connected any one device can uh, have the mastership okay in the given point of time once its process is completed it will hand over its charge to somebody else somebody else in the sense other device which is requesting and handling of this uh, bus mastership from one device to other device is called as bus arbitration very simple okay bus arbitration is a process of giving or changing the ownership from one device to another device what is the device means device means an input output device that's it very simple concept okay so why bus is required bus is required to transfer the data so data transferring can be done between processor or memory or processor to input output devices or memory to input output devices wherever okay any two peripherals it will be done so at a time or in a given interval of time given instance of time a single device can transfer the data using bus okay and whenever the uh, bus is used by some device the rest of the devices will have to wait only and once the process is completed the data transfer is done once the data session is completed the device will hand over its charge that is bus mastership charge is called as bus mastership that bus mastership will be hand over, handed over to someone else who is requesting this is done by the actually this transferring of this bus ownership or mastership is done by or governed by processor okay this transferring of uh, bus mastership is called as bus arbitration process actually for arbitration uh, two approaches available one is called as centralized arbitration and other one is called as distributed arbitration uh, so centralized arbitration actually processor processor is the default bus master and processor will be uh, performing all the tasks saying uh, assigning the bus mastership to someone else and taking back the bus mastership and allotting it to some of the other devices and all that is done by a single unit that is processor whereas in case of distributed arbitration say all the devices are equally contributes for mastership bus for arbitration process so we will be discussing in detail about the centralized and distributed arbitration uh, by using the diagram so here is the centralized arbitration very simple diagram this is this is similar to your uh, interrupt request what you have studied earlier common it, uh, interrupt request and all you have studied no in intr bar and inta so similar to that diagram only uh, you instead of devices it is marked as dma controller okay it is the continuation of dma controller now so various dma controllers you can mark them as device also but better use the same terminology is what is there in the textbook so dma controller 1 dma controller 2 and so on dma controller n n number of dma controllers are connected together through a bus okay and it is connected to the processor so uh, in, instead of interrupt request 
INTR bar here BR bar is used. What is that? Bus request. BR stands for bus request. Very simple concept students. So, okay. If you have understood the previous concepts, then definitely this topic will be easier for you. So, uh, you can find lot of similarities here. Earlier we have used INTR bar. No. In the same way, now you have to use the bus request bar. That is BR bar. That's it. Okay. And one more additional control signal you can find on top that is BBSY bar which stands for bus busy. Bus busy. It is another indicator, additional indicator. Because whenever a bus is being used by someone, then whenever a bus is being used by someone, the rest of the devices should be knowing the bus is being utilized. You cannot request. So such type of information should be provided. For that purpose, we have used in this controller circuit an additional control signal is used that is bus busy BBSY. Similar to interrupt acknowledgement INTA, what we have here? BG we have. We have BG. That's it. Getting no? So if DMA controller 2 has raised the request, then grant signal will be sent to 2 only. DMA controller 2 only. So BG2 signal will be sent actually and it is signals will be passed serially from BG1 followed by next device and so on. So uh, first the signal will be sent to BG1, BG1 signal will be sent to DMA controller 1 but DMA controller 1 will come to know based on the identity of the acknowledgement. So this is intended to someone else simply it will forward to the next member and hence BG2 will receive it getting no uh, please ask if there are any difficulty so when bus busy will be set to one then so best bus busy will be set to high i mean so bus busy will set to high whenever bus grant signal is activated corresponding bus grant once the bus grant is activated bus busy also will be activated because because you have to uh, tell the other members other participants that you are using the bus currently right others cannot request if the request is done also the bus cannot cannot be arbitrated it can be arbitrated only once the process is completed right so this is one very simple concept if you understand the diagram then explanation you can write your own explanation getting no so students Listen carefully. If you understand the diagram properly, easily you can write your own explanation. Very simple. BR stands for bus request. There is a common bus request line, common bus grant line. Okay. Using the device ID or DMA controller ID, processor will come to know. Okay. You know, have studied about vector interrupt no earlier. In the same way. So, um, using the device ID, while sending the bus request, uh, it will send its ID also. So using the DMA controller ID, processor will come to know uh, to whom to send the acknowledgement. If the bus is free, definitely acknowledgement, acknowledgement will be sent to the particular device saying bus granted, okay, bus grant signal BG stands for. And once the bus grant signal is sent, Immediately bus busy line will be activated to indicate the other participants that bus is granted to so and so member. You have to wait till the completion of its process. Okay. Very simple concept. Please try to understand. If you understand the diagram, definitely you can write your own explanation. Okay. Next is about the... A distributed arbitration. We will see the distributed arbitration process in the next session. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.